Welcome to today's broadcast. This is Matthias 76, and together we are Decoding the Deception. As we go to press here in production of this video, this is a current headline, California wildfires nearly 1,000 unaccounted for in Camp Fire. This is the situation that we are dealing with. The death toll is at least at 76, and I can't help but think that those 1,000 unaccounted for, many of them have perished in the flames. Just want to do a recap of what's gone on with this fire, and this is the reason. The news cycle advances rapidly. I believe that it does that for a reason. They want to move us off of this onto something else, and then we never really stop and assess and think about and process this story. They move it on to another, and this one is gone from our minds and certainly gone from the news. That way, it can be covered up. Got a number of points, just kind of in summation of the events with this fire, a number of points that I want to go through. Some of them have been covered in previous videos. Others have not. Number one, these fires started explosively. They did not begin in a normal way. And I'm going to show you evidence of that, evidence that another YouTuber has provided. And I will show it to you. I got his permission. But here's a headline from the New York Times. What started the California fires? Experts track the blaze's origin. And they go back to the same old, same old, saying that it was a little brush fire here and then stir in some trouble from PG&E. And don't forget that PG&E is a utility company that is owned and controlled by none other than the Rothschilds. They lie about strong winds playing a part in that. There have been people who have shown, looking at the at the actual satellite imagery and information available at the time that there were no strong winds. Mike Morales did that work at Above Ground World News. So they've lied about that, and they get away with this stuff just because they say it. We have to wake up. You were awake, or you would not be listening, but you need to wake up others and not let their smear tactics force you into silence. If... They want to make us look as though we are nuts and we all wear tinfoil hats. Then be willing to take your friends to get fitted properly so that they have effective equipment. Ignore their nonsense. Ignore their smears and their slander is the point. I want to examine the moment at which the campfire began, the camp wildfire began. And you don't have to go to the media. You won't find anything there. They will not speak the truth. They certainly will not show it to you. But the reality is that the evidence, the information is there and it is readily available. Now, as you watch this cut from a video from Mike Morales, I want to give you a little bit of information to clue you in. You are looking at a satellite feed from the moment the campfire began, but make sure and take in the perspective. You're seeing half of Nevada, all of, Cal all of California, and the Pacific Ocean. So when you see this fire begin and that smoke plume begin, put it in perspective how big it is and watch in the bottom left corner the timestamp. It's advancing in 15-minute increments how fast that smoke plume grows to what I'm just guessing, I'm not an expert, but has to be 20, 30, 40,000 feet in the air or higher. Now, as to what the different things are, the other things on the screen, that's certainly up to debate. I think that Mike Morales' explanation is valid, but that doesn't matter. It is the speed at which this fire begins and the rate at which that smoke plume increases. That is not the progression of a natural wildfire. Picking up. We're going back forward. Boom. We have three, either three craft flying side by side. 
or three abreast. Looks like some kind of military formation will go up 15 minutes. And then you can just barely see one go up another 15 minutes. He's coming in much hotter now. Next 15 minutes. So within that 15 minute time stamp, we have the initial explosion with a aircraft right there. And now it looks like we have four craft out ahead of this in an arc. And when I align this footage with the, the footage, it looks like a rocket shoots up. This is the initial explosion. And then there's a big black square dot. I don't know what that is yet. And then you can see the shadow. Now I can't do this a minute at a time. I can only do 15 minutes at a time. And you can see what appeared to be a rocket lifting off or some kind of projectile that flew up and comes down to earth. You can see this really dark mass that's going off the direction of what we've seen fall out of the sky. So definitely completely different. So what we know, what the video evidence shows, this satellite footage shows, is that this fire started explosively. Point number two, these fires burned randomly and missed the trees. These are video pictures we looked at before, but look at the houses burned and the trees right next to them still standing. We see the same here. All of the houses gone. All of the trees, many of them still green, are still there. And the same thing here, and even more in this picture. We've examined this one before. Look at the random nature of homes destroyed, skip one, untouched. Nothing about the one property touched. Trees, anything else, then other homes burned, and all the trees around them left standing and green. Number three, these fires burned ferociously. The firemen out there are saying this, and from what we hear, the on-the-ground reports from firemen, their video reports of what they're seeing and what they're encountering, those are not managing to make it out onto the World Wide Web. But just look at this picture of this car. Everything consumed, all plastic gone, the aluminum alloy wheels gone, the glass melted, and consistently they find that the engine blocks are left in a smoldering lump of slag. We looked at this picture before, but look at the lots here. There's something that's missing. We talked about the ferocity of these flames and that there's no porcelain, there's no toilets left. It takes 3,334 degrees Fahrenheit to melt toilets, the hottest of huge forest fires. 150 foot flames only burn at 2,192 degrees difference of 1142 degrees, something is amiss. Point number four, these fires, rather even than seeming to be random, they seem to be aimed, targeted. Look at this picture of these cars, totally immolated, gone, just like the other cars we've looked at, and what's around them? What's around them? Trees that are not burned down, trees that still have foliage, but the cars are taken out. Now, how can that be? We don't know. And here again, that picture we just looked at, some things hit, other things not. It just isn't consistent with a normal wildfire's behavior. This somehow, for some reason, some way was aimed. How else can you explain this? And I don't know how. How can you tell, except that there was, it would seem, something directing this? I don't know. Next point is this. It is a question. Is technology being used as a weapon? We know that there is all kinds of technology out there, directed energy weapons, and who knows what else. And dear friends, please understand this. Please understand this. 
Everyone in the truther community who really digs into things, examines things, seeks to learn and, and find out the answers, almost everyone is in agreement that the technology that is really there, the technology that the elites have, that the military has, is in reality 30, 40 years beyond the re technology that they let us know about. When information about some new technology leaks out, they've had it for a long, long time. Now, this is important. It cannot be said with certainty what transpired here, what kind of technology was employed. We don't know. But we can deduce that this is not a common or normal forest or wildfire. And I really liken this to the way we look at the JFK assassination. Do you know what I know absolutely and certainly about the JFK assassination? What I know is that the story they told us is a lie. And then when they revised it, guess what? That's a lie too. And they're still covering up. When information from the Warren Commission was released, Trump still left a large part of it classified. They're still lying to us. One time as a young man, I found myself confronted by, let's say, local law enforcement. Some friends and I had been behaving inappropriately, and I sought, as young men will, to lie my way out of it. And the sheriff deputy was having none of that, and he boomed in my face. I didn't just fall off a hay wagon from Oklahoma. Don't lie to me. When I see the misinformation that is given to us, I hear that voice again from that sheriff's deputy saying he hadn't just fallen off a hay wagon from Oklahoma. No derogatory intent toward the people of Oklahoma. I'm a Midwesterner myself. So we don't know, but we do know it's impossible to explain by normal means. So there are questions, questions, and more questions. Next point, they kept the rain away. This is a, a screenshot of a Nexrad radar system at work, and you see that streak shooting out. It can send a targeted beam with these Nexrad radars, and I'm not going to go into it. I'll leave that to experts, people like Mike Morales and, and Jim Lee. Links are below. With these Nexrad radar systems, they are able to control storm systems. They do it all the time. There is irrefutable video evidence. And again, thanks Mike Morales and for letting me use that video clip. I strongly recommend that you go check him out. He diagnoses what's going on in the weather each and every night. Wonderful information, wonderful work. So if this technology is new to you, dig in, find out more. They've been using it for quite some time. When they want to make it rain, they can make it rain. They've had that technology for decades, and the information is there in abundance. You can look at my video, Crisscross Skies Strategic Aerosol Injections, and I give some information on that there, kind of in a summary way. If they wanted to make it rain and put those fires out, they could have. But they used the technology, they knew, used the Nexrad radar to keep it dry, to keep the moisture that wanted to come in, that according to normal weather patterns would have come in, they kept it away. And if that sounds nuts, that's only because you haven't looked into it and learned what they are able to do, what they have done, and what they were doing there in California. If they want it to rain, it'll rain. If they don't want it to rain, it won't rain. If they wanted to, they could give us all a white Christmas. They could use this technology to some good. They choose not to. And so it is hard. It is hard not to conclude that these fires are intentional. When you add up points number one through five, it is hard to conclude anything other than that these fires were intentional. They did it on purpose. 
to what degree, and I didn't have this as a point here, but to what degree Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 play a role in this and their desire to move people from the country, and where are these fires? Move people from the countryside into their stack and pack cities. To what degree that factors in, we don't know. We can only speculate, but it is hard to conclude anything other than that these fires were intentional. They wanted to keep them burning. And now, and now, the rain will wash all the evidence away. Whatever chemical signatures are there from whatever might have been done, whatever other evidence that might lead us to be able to evaluate and assess what technologies were used and how that happened, it'll all be washed away. And they've been greasing the skids for those stories for a few days now. But here from CNN, California fires, but also new dangers, talking about these storms coming in. And there in California, mudslides are always a danger. Can you imagine the peril that is there when they have burned everything away and now heavy, heavy rains will come in? Heavy rains that they are allowing to come in or causing to come in to cover up what it is they've done. Now, I know that much of what I'm saying, if this is new to you, if these fires have been the cause, the impetus for you to begin to look into things because you've gotten curious, I know that a good bit of what I have shared in this video and my other videos about the fire may well seem like insanity. I understand it because it was not that long ago that I was there. And if it were not for someone pushing me and feeding me information and challenging me to think and not caring that I thought they were nuts, if it weren't for their persistence, decoding the deception would not exist and Matthias 76 would not be speaking to you today. But I got curious. A preponderance of evidence forced me to begin to look into things. And so I started a journey, a journey of discovery. And if decoding the deception is about anything, it is about that. It is a journey of discovery in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because he is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But it is a journey of discovery to look at the things in this world and to truly examine them and to see what is going on. We're new. We've just launched at the beginning of this month, but we're starting to get traction. We're starting to have people pay attention to what we're doing. I encourage you to share this video with someone else. Encourage them to watch it or one of my other videos on the fire. And I encourage you to go to our website. Go to our website. Here it is, Decoding the Deception. And we've got all the videos that we do here on the homepage. You can find them all there. But to me, the heart of what we've done with this website is here in the Research tab. You can go to our Knowledge Base, and it's searchable. You can go to the Knowledge Base, and we have over 260 YouTube videos that we have screened and pulled together here for you. You click on a link, you can watch the video right here from our website, but you can go and research things. Here we've got all of these videos on geoengineering and weather. You can learn more. There's quite a list here, but it is searchable. So if you type in NextRad, you're going to find videos that talk about NextRad radar, and you can learn. Learn from people like Jim Lee. Learn from people like Mike Morales. But we encourage you to go here and begin to dig in, begin to learn, because we are being deceived, and the deception is vast. It is on so many fronts. It is very involved. Also, I encourage you to support us. We need your support. If you're interested in what we're doing, if you want more, and if you want to share it with others, then please be so kind as to support us. We need your help. You can go here to our Support Us tab. You can go down and we've got links to PayPal and Patreon. You've got the ability to go and even 
Go to the Amazon shop. There are products that we recommend if you buy them through us, through these links, we get a little bit of support for that. And the same thing goes for the, for the Brighteon store that's there on the support page. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for being interested. And I commend you for investigating and joining in on the journey of decoding the deception. That concludes our broadcast for today. We invite you to visit our webpage. We don't want to let the social media technocrats keep us apart. YouTube can shut us down at any time. We have a plan to keep in touch. We need your email address to make that work. And we promise we will not email you for any other purpose. In order to make this broadcast work, we need your support. You can go to our support page on our website, or you can use the links below to either Patreon or PayPal. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give us a like. And if you like it, please consider sharing this video with someone else. We would love it if you would subscribe, and if you subscribe, make sure and click that bell so that you're notified when we put out new videos. We love to hear from you, so down below in the comments section, let us know what you think. This is Matthias76. Together, we are decoding the deception. God bless, and have a great day.